Hey, Greg from Bureaucracy here. Uh, you may have noticed that my lips aren't moving at the same time as this sound that you're hearing is coming out. That's because this is the second take I'd done of a video review of Joseph Wood from Liberty Brewing's Chili Beers. And uh, the first take was lost completely, thank you YouTube. And the second take, I lost the audio due to my own incompetence and chose the wrong mic device while recording. So I'm adding some uh, narration after the fact. Anyway. Um, massive thank you, massive props to Joseph for sending me these beers. I uh, had a big cry and a sulk on uh, online and said I was I was jealous because everyone else had them and wah wah wah. I wasn't really, but you know I was playing it up as I do in, on on uh, Twitter. I'm a big cry baby, and uh, Joseph took pity on me and sent me a couple of bottles of beer freshly filled from the kegs via picnic tap into the bottles that you see before you. Um, we have his. First attempt, which is a mild uh, chili beer, and his second attempt, which is has a fire written on the bottle, and is awesome, um, and it's a lot more has a lot more heat, a lot more spice. <coughs> Pardon me. As you can see at the moment, I'm uh, pouring myself a lovely glass of the first beer, slightly less than I poured in the first take because you know it's a week night and. Uh, I knew I might need to edit this afterwards. As it turned out, I wasn't expecting to have to redub a whole lot of audio, but that's fine. Anyway, the uh, the beer has a beautiful creamy white head, lovely orange amber color, um, just delicious. I think there I'm going on about the fact that because it's the second take, I was going to punish myself for failing by eating a teaspoon of um, Fire Dragon Chili's Dragon's Fury. Um, you can hang around and see how that goes later. To be honest, it's not very exciting. Uh, <laughs> I think I've eaten too much chili lately and the effect wasn't really anything dramatic. Anyway, so it, look at how beautiful that beer is. See, I'm holding it up there. I'm showing you how sexy it is. It's in my Castles and Sons pint glass and I love Castles and Sons. Great pub, great beers, great times being there, great service. If you're in Christchurch, get down there and check it out. Anyway, enough of that. Back to uh, back to tasting the beer. So it's fruity, it's malty. It's all about the malt. This beer. There's some some really really nice caramel toffee notes going on. Um, there's a gentle hoppiness. It's balanced. It's not too sweet. Um, there's not any chili evident on the nose. Uh, there's not a lot of hop evident on the nose either. It's just a, a, a malt. It's all about the malt. Um, on the palate, not too hot, not too spicy. Um, you, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect with these beers. Uh, I was glad that they came across as, well, the first one came across as fairly gentle and laid back. It was a good way to ease into it. Um, I was surprised at the lack of hop, just because I know Joseph and I know he loves his hops. And having talked to him a few minutes ago, just on the phone, uh, before I recorded this, Turns out there was a lot more hop in it than I thought there was, so either the chilli or the malt is uh, doing something there. I do know there was a high mash temperature involved, so the, the residual um, uh, sugars in the beer are, are covering up the lack of hop <coughs> and the low attenuation, which the yeast would have achieved, which means they didn't eat all those sugars away. Um, look at me quaff that. God, that was just... That was just impressive. What am I doing? It's like the town drunk in here. Anyway, this is me showing you the fact that it has fire written on the bottle, although you can't really see that in that shot. That's good work, Greg. You're awesome. Um, while I'm opening this, let's take time to admire the stylish bureaucracy shirt available to order from a Phil near you. Um, Phil's our awesome guy who does everything but the brewing itself. And to be fair, he usually does his fair share of the grunt work out there if not more. Um, sorry Phil if you're watching, you do pretty much everything because I'm lazy and I'm freaking out about the beer. Anyway, enough of that. <clears throat> On to, what was I, I don't even know what I was saying there, it was obviously, I thought it was funny, someone has to. So again you can see it's pretty similar to the colour on the last beer, same sort of beautiful creamy pillowy off-white head, it just sticks around that head too, laces the glass beautifully when it's empty. Um, there you go, look at me showing it to you. See how crystal clear it is? It's good. 
so I forget what I was thinking there. I was thinking I might be in trouble now because I don't know what to expect from this. This is the hot one. And then I remember smelling it and getting this beautiful chili fruit note. Like, not really any heat, just chili fruit. It smelled divine. It was, uh, you know, I, I've not had that aroma in a beer before. Any chili beers I've had have been ridiculously hot and completely lacking in aroma or anything like that. Uh, or they've been the other end of the scale where it's all about the complexity of flavor um dave wood did a beautiful chili stout or chili porter i forget which and it was um i remember jeff griggs commenting it should have been used as a marinade it was so good uh <clears throat> although i do wonder why he didn't just want to drink it like i did um anyway that gave quite a bit of warmth in the throat and on the lips but it wasn't as hot as i was expecting uh, I was a little nervous in the first take we did of this, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't sure how hot it was going to be, given Joseph's reputation for eating pretty much the sun, um, and it just wasn't that hot. So, it, uh, but beautiful flavours, you know, really, really nice flavours. That said, I gave some of the hot one to my wife, and uh, she, her throat closed up and she pronounced it extremely hot, so maybe I'm just calibrated. <coughs> Um, she did like the mild version though, I think, did you? Yes. Yes, she did like the mild version, she thought that was quite good. Um, I didn't realise they were 7% when I was drinking them, I think at this point I was talking about the alcohol level and how I thought they were very sessionable beers, um, probably around 5, no higher than 6%. Joseph now tells me they were actually up around 7 that's quite a lot really. Um, you can see there I'm really enjoying that beer really really enjoying it um, it just had a bit of everything uh, it had malt it had hops and it had heat and it had beautiful fruit flavor from the chilies um, combining well with the fruit esters from the fermentation actually that's one thing I didn't ask Joe is what yeast did you use I'd love to know um, I'm guessing it might be American ale too or it might be an English yeast it could be an English yeast fermented fairly, fairly uh, warm, or an American yeast fermented at the middle range and then driven hard at the end. I don't know. I get a, I get a similar note from 1272 when I drive it hard. A slightly peachy, aromatic uh, ester there. Anyway, that now I'm talking about my bar and my tiny deformed beer engine alongside my two slightly larger beer engines. Uh, and that's the sparkler that I leave off my hand pump just for Kieran Hazlitt more because I know that he hates sparklers um, but I put it on for, for uh, Barry when he comes around anyway that's a long story and don't know why I opened the fridge it appears you can't see anything from that shot I was trying to show you the kegs inside you can't see them tough luck um, I think at this point I also said a massive congratulations to Joseph and Christina uh, for their efforts at the uh, Brewers Guild Awards in Wellington. I was gutted I wasn't there to see Joseph collect the uh, the award himself. Uh, I went to the awards last year, loved it, and vowed I'd go back again this year, and instead I went drinking. Uh, probably the worst night not to be somewhere. So proud of Joe. I've seen him go from a, a very, very keen home brewer, a uh, bit of a home brewing god, and now he's a bit of a commercial brewing god and boy does he rock right now comes the silliness we decide that you know since I failed at eating fire dragon chili before uh, or rather since I failed at uh, recording the first take of this it was time to eat some fire dragon chili here goes a teaspoon of it a fairly good teaspoon it's a big teaspoon it's one of those can you see oh, you can't yeah, you kinda can see that anyway had to chew it for a bit gotta chew it you gotta have it hanging around your mouth you gotta get it all under your tongue all around the roof of your mouth just gotta get it everywhere because basically if you don't you're cheating that wasn't a 30 second shot Greg that was a bit weak in fact if I could travel back in time and smack past me in the face for not doing 30 seconds I would anyway I remember being shocked at this point. I think I've built up way too much tolerance in the last couple of weeks because 
I'm just not feeling that at all. I remember there, w there should have been a bit of heat, a bit of sweat. As a result, there's just a pasty fat white man sitting there going, oh, where's the bird? Anyway, it tasted good, as their chili always does. You should go to find firedragonchilies.co.nz, or is it .com? I should have looked that up before I recorded this. Anyway, Google Fire Dragon Chilies, uh, email them, send in an order, Clint will hook you up. And he's a fantastic man, he'll make sure that you get the burn that you need. Here's me pouring a glass of uh, the mild version again to see how it goes with the, the chili that, flavor that's still in my mouth from the Dragon's Fury. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect, I thought it might be interesting. Boy was I wrong. Well, I was right. It was more than interesting, it was amazing. Um, it really is incredible just how much the, the chili heat and the chili flavor transforms your taste buds. What was a nice balanced beer became a fruit punch explosion in the mouth. Um, just like mind-blowingly fruity. You can no, you can't. I was going to say you can see on my face how good I thought that was, but you really can't. Oh, there we go. That looked a little bit more enjoyable. Uh, it's kind of weird watching yourself and talking over it. It really, really is. And I apologize to people watching this on YouTube and thinking, why the fuck is he doing this? This is just bizarre. Anyway, that was cool. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about, or rather I talked about in the take, but not uh, on this is how well these these both of these beers would go with food um, particularly the fire version the, the hot uh, version I could see going really really well with a uh, like a Thai meal a, a pad prig sod which is basically a, a vegetable stir-fry uh, with chicken on a hot um, in a hot, thin hot chili sauce served on basmati rice um, it's a really simple dish but full of bright green chili flavors and really would go well with that beer. The malt would just wrap around it. The extra heat in the chili would meld with the chili in the in the dish um, and they'd just play off each other nicely, I think. The other thing I thought was spring rolls, um, which would go well with either version. You'd get the, um, you know, you'd cut through the fat a bit with the carbonation as well as getting the, the nice um, bright chili and the vegetable uh, flavors coming through from that. I really, really enjoyed both of those beers with the Dragon's Fury uh, residue, if you like, or residual flavor in my mouth. Um, if anyone's keen to do it, they totally should. Whether you need to work up to eating that chili sauce and then drinking the beer, I don't know, but it's well worth giving a crack. It really is. Right, so I think we're coming to the end of this. I've probably got a little bit more rabbiting on to do. I think at this point I was recommending that you try uh, eating some chili and try experimenting with foods in chili and beer in chili because it, it really does change your taste buds, changes your palate, and um, makes you think about what you're doing. Anyway, I think at this point I'm preparing to toast Joseph at Liberty and Christina at Liberty because they're both wonderful, wonderful people. And thanks again, Joe, for sending the beer. Cheers to you.